Michael, you've developed a, um, a neuropsychological theory of consciousness, which is entirely materialistic. And I think the natural consequences of that theory would be to state that it is entirely possible to, to artificially create real human-level consciousness in non-biological substrata, whether it's silicon or yeah. whatever else. Yeah. Is that right? Yes, I think that's true. I mean, that's a very difficult task, but I think it's doable. I think it's inevitable, uh, given the way that uh, computer technology is moving forward. I think there, there, there are two things that are advancing. Computer technology and the ability to scan brains at very high resolution. Mm -hmm. And you put those two together, and you look 50, 100, or 150 years in the future. Right. And give, give and take as much time as you want. That's, uh, we're talking about <laughs> yes. in, in principle. Yeah, in principle. Can, can, can you do it? And, and, and I, I would have to say, it's not that you think. You, have to, you would have to say, you're sure. So is there any doubt, it, it, if it turned out to be impossible to recreate human consciousness in non-biological material, what, what would be the obstacle? I don't think there, there is a theoretical obstacle. I think it, it can happen, it will happen, you know, unless some disaster befalls us before then. It's, it's inevitable. This is going to happen. Uh, and it's going to happen sooner than, than most people realize. One of the problems is how will we know it happened? Right. Well, one of the issues of consciousness is uh, we, I don't know if you're conscious. Right. You don't know if I'm conscious. But we have a kind of gut certainty about it. Uh, and I think this is because uh, consciousness, awareness is so much of an attribution. It's a social attribution. And when you build a robot that acts like it's conscious mm -hmm. and can talk about its own awareness and understands that other people are conscious and we interact with it, you know, we will inevit inevitably have that, uh, that social perception, that gut feeling. Uh, and we, we will have the, yes. the feeling, but you know, you, you've had talks where you can make me feel that way for a puppet. Yes. <laughs> so, but, but the, and the puppet doesn't have consciousness. Well, well, the puppet can't attribute it to itself. So, but we can attribute to it. Yes, exactly. And so we can attribute to a robot, but, but we still will never yeah. know if that robot has the but consciousness. But we can build a robot such that it can attribute those properties to itself and to, to well, other wait, people. It, it, it can tell us that it's attributing the to itself, but I can program a computer that it can speak and says I am conscious, and this will be more sophisticated yes. version. But you'll, uh, it needs it, to be a lot more sophisticated than that. Yeah, but but no matter how sophisticated, can you really ever know whether there's a really an internal? If there's anybody home internal? Yeah, if there's an internal experience, I would say there isn't in us either. I would say what we do is compute a construct of awareness. Wow, that's a very powerful and it, it, statement. It, it you snuck, it, to you ourselves. snuck it in there. <laughs> <laughs> you say, we don't either. Well, I, I think I do. Well, I would say you're convinced of it. <laughs> yeah, OK. Right? So you have arrived at that conclusion, and you've attached a high degree of certainty to it, and you've attributed that set of properties to yourself in much the same way that you can attribute those properties to me. Right. And those are things that can be programmed into a, a computer system, and those are the things we will do, we will be able to do in the future. So I can take that in two ways. One, I can take it where the robot really will have an inner experience. Yeah, I don't think it will. Okay, no, well, this, this we so, so then, then that's a very powerful thing, that you're saying that, that you're saying that the consciousness that we think we have, that I think I have, is really uh, my brain fooling me in some kind of way, but I'm aware of that being fooled. Uh, I can't get out of this loop. Yeah, in a way, it's your brain, it's uh, what you have, you do have something real. You have attention, it's a real process. Okay. And then you have this kind of warpy description of attention. And that's what you describe as your awareness. So what do I think I have that I really don't have, and that the robot won't have either, but the robot is the same as me? Uh, a non-physical experience. Non-physical experience. So what, uh, I mean. Experienceness, I, awareness is a description. It's not something you have. It's something that your brain attributes to itself. OK, and is that, is that what's called a limitativism? Does that, are you, are you downgrading consciousness as a? Yeah, some people might think of it that way. I mean, one, one way to put it, you go to a conference on consciousness, and in some ways I feel like I'm at a conference on uh, Tolkien's Middle Earth. 
and everyone's talking about Middle Earth, you know, and our, I don't know, orcs really, elves that got modified and this and that, and you can talk and talk about it and whether there's really magic in Middle Earth. And then I'm the iconoclast, I guess, who's foolish enough to say, yeah, that's true, but it's all a description of something. And it exists only in simulation. It exists only as information, only as description. There actually isn't a real Middle Earth. Well, you could say it's a description of a real thing because it's a kind of warpy description of medieval Europe. Uh, but it doesn't exist physically as such. Mm. And this is very much what I would say about awareness. This is why it will be possible to program them into computers and when people interact with those computers they will be absolutely certain that there's a, an aware being there. Okay, I can go with you that far, but let me ask you then this question. Would it then be possible, according to your understanding, yeah. to upload yes. my personality yes. in its full sense in some yes. future technology yes. so that I think that I and my first person experience yes. are living forever in, yes. in a digital format? Yes. And I would say that's probably easier to do, because it's a lot easier to copy something than it is to engineer it from scratch. So to, to copy the processes in your brain without fully understanding them, right, to, right. to copy them okay. you know, in silicon or whatever the right, right, right. Um, you know, quantum computer or whatever right. the future thing is, right. that I think that's coming first, to s start okay. uploading people uh, you know, a, a, a yeah. form of trying to, to, to live forever. But I think it's going to be terrible, by the way, for us socially. <laughs> but, but if you can do it once, if you can upload me once, yes. you can do it twice. Yes. I mean, it's no difference. Yes. And I can do it twice, you can do it five times, yes. a thousand times. Yes. And so each one will have the same inner experience that I have now? Yes, but you know, they'll branch off. Oh, it can get weirder because let's say we but, both... But there's a difference between being a clone yeah. where somebody, you take a cell of mine and it's like, it, it, it's like a twin brother. Yeah. I mean, there's no, there's no conscious relationship. Yeah. People don't understand yeah. what human cloning is. This is different though. Yeah. I have a, I have a, 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 a first person experience. Yeah. Talking to you, seeing yeah. places and seeing the yeah. floor and all that. And if that's uploaded and, and, and multiplied multiple times, what's happening to my first person experience? Well, each one will have its own first person experience and believe that and, it is the real one. Okay, yeah. and, and I, I believe I'm the real one, but I won't, I won't then have multiple no. ones. Each one will have their own. Yeah. Except for what's this. The, that sounds like a clone. It doesn't sound like it's uploading me. That's a big difference. Well, you, one way to put it is every morning you wake up as a physically different thing because there's but constant I still, have the inner, I still have the inner sense of unity. Yeah, well, those clones each will too, because they'll have all the same thoughts and memories and beliefs and so on. And then they'll be confronted with clones. Does this make you happy? Uh, no. Actually, <laughs> one of the weirdest parts of it, let's say we both upload, you and me. Well, in the real world, we try to communicate. We have cell phones. We each, but we can't plug our brains together through USB ports. <laughs> If we upload ourselves onto a computer, that becomes possible to join and, yeah. and meld in really weird no, no ways. No offense, but I'd rather not. I, <laughs> I think that this is going that a this is going to happen, and b it's going to be just uh, radically reforming our society in ways that I, you know, I don't want to be around for. Just to be straightforward about it. But if you are uploaded, you will be. If I am uploaded, you know, I hope I die before the technology comes around, <laughs> to be perfectly honest.